I, my name is Hassan and um, I uh, founded Spiritual Walks and essentially my aim is to uh, sort of reignite the spark within um, individuals to continue to inquire mm -hmm. into the mystery of life and to understand uh, more uh, about life and essentially, in other words, themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I, I, we've been friends on Facebook quite some time, Kento, and we uh, share similar um, sort of content based on non-duality even though I also post things that are outside of non-duality more with like physical improvements and, and your everyday life um, that's very important uh, yes. yeah exactly exactly it's all part of the play as well isn't it mm -hmm. so uh, so yeah now we're here we've decided to go ahead and embark on this sort of zoom call to, mm. to you know share um, some insights uh, maybe some stories as well uh, that you know we hope that can help um, other people who will listen to this so please uh, tell me tell me a bit more about yourself Ken. yeah sure uh, my name is Kinta Hori um, I, I'm a founder of a project called Modern Colon Project uh, which is uh, uh, I think it's a modern version of colon uh, system uh, which is uh, mainly from the Zen tradition and uh, it's a set of questions that makes the uh, inquirer, inquirers to look at, uh, at a certain aspect of uh, the, our true nature. And uh, it has a lot of variations. And uh, it has been accumulated uh, for uh, ages to, uh, and systematized uh, so that it's... Uh, it's it becomes the most uh, uh, effective way for uh, people for inquirers to uh, uh, realize uh, their true nature and uh, also uh, embody that um, uh, realization and also deepen and making it um, clearer. Their so their vision, so to call. So uh, the I, I think my uh, concern about it is that it's too um, it's old. The classic colon system is old, and um, some some part of it is not applicable to our modern life. You know, they 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 with the the material they um, uh, use is based on what was popular or what what there was in their ages so it's not like it's not quite connected to our modern everyday life uh, although that's the main thing that's what is about our true nature our everyday life our everyday suffering and we will have to just look at it uh, because yeah. that's that is about our true nature um, yeah walking sleeping eating you know uh talking with people you know suffering getting angry those things mm. yeah yeah so, 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 mm -hmm. for, for, sorry for, for the individual who doesn't know what a koan is yeah how would you how would you describe it okay so it's in the in the old days in china uh zen priests used to um do special conversations it's not it's not really special for them but it's it's the outside of our everyday rational uh kind of conversation and uh there has been a lot of it so uh basically the teacher or the master uh suggests or uh talks about something or just post uh, a question uh, and the student uh, will be asked to answer it uh, immediately so that dialogue uh, was done a lot in the in those days mm. and uh, some people try to record that 
uh, in the form of writing. And uh, so those recordings of the writing has been uh, preserved uh, through ages. And uh, that some of them has have become book, okay, of the recording of the conversation in a written form. Mm. So later, people started to use it uh, as a as a, a material for later people to um, to revive or to to do the same to do the same uh, among later generations of uh, teacher and student. So that's a uh, uh, that's a recorded material of the live conversation between. All, uh, be between teachers and students of all their ages. So that's what is um, basically about koans. So it's a recording of right. uh, dialogue between uh, right. 10 practitioners. Nice. I think, I think maybe now it's perhaps appropriate to, to look at an example like a koan. Maybe okay, something sure. that is um, old school because you mm -hmm. mentioned how there's mm -hmm. the transition mm -hmm. and the update. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's look at like a, a, an old version and maybe a new sure. version and see. Sure. Yeah. So uh, the older version, you know, you, know, you know, there are some very basic kind of columns that every teacher in this tradition asks uh, as, a, as a starter of this whole column system. And one of them is the column move. Uh, it's called Muji sometimes, and uh, it goes something like this. I'm not really sure if I'm really uh, precise about it, but it goes like this. So there was a priest called Joshu, and he asked, uh, no, a priest asks him, um, do dogs have Buddha nature? Mm. And this priest, this master, Joshu, uh, answers, just in one word, mu. So that's pretty much how the koan goes. And uh, should I explain how it works? Please, please, mm -hmm. please go ahead. So it's it, mu in Chinese uh, means nothing or no, probably nothing, no. And um, so. Uh, Basically, in the, in the, in this context, it seems like um, this master is answering uh, that uh, there's no Buddha nature, but that's not uh, the point about this koan. It's beyond uh, yes or no, or something or nothing. And uh, so the practitioners are required to uh, be um, become one with that mu. Uh, you can call it a sound, you can call it a word, but uh, the point is that um, you have to be it to really uh, know the answer or understand it. So how they try it is they um, continue um, doing a mu, mu, mu something like this. Uh, and at first, there's just me that is uttering this word and this mu that's uttering. But if you really uh, continue doing it in a sincere manner, um, the boundary or the division becomes uh, somewhat not really obvious, okay? Mm. And uh, first of all, at the at the point you're doing, uh, actually there's no division, okay? Because you are not really thinking about you and this mu. Mm. But somehow it seems for people uh, that you are the reciter and this mu is something that is recited. So the aim is to just break that division by continually doing 
and continually doing this simple, very simple thing, like moo, moo, moo. And at some point, um, so for you to recognize something, it, it, it's, you, you need to have this you to observe it, right? So that's still the vision. But within that framework of division, you will notice that there is no you that is doing moon. Or in other words, you can say that um, you and moon are one. Okay, so that's the first part. That's the first part you will go through uh, during this process of koan uh, system you will know. So, so you're saying the first part is more like a sort of mantra? Um, um, you, can, you, can, you can say that it's mantra, it's, although, it's like a... mm, mm, although I'm not sure if that's uh, really, you know, that connects to the, the tradition of mantra. But right. surely, surely, surely I can tell that there's some part that uh, close. Okay, okay. Mm. yeah, yeah. No, because I, <clears throat> so, so coming, with having a background in the Islamic faith, we have different um, sort of, let's say, you know, I guess, I guess the uh, mainstream way of describing it is mantra, perhaps, mm -hmm. but they are perhaps prayers, mm -hmm. uh, or in Arabic it's dhikr or um, tasbihat, and essentially what it is is, you know, um, let's say there's a gratitude one, right? Um, what happens is as you keep repeating the, 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 the gratitude form or the gratitude word, mm -hmm. um, eventually I fully underst understood what you said that um, the boundary between the you and the doing mm -hmm. uh, sort of dissolves a little. Mm -hmm. Oh, right? that sounds kind of really uh, quite similar to what I've Yeah, been. yeah, yeah. And so eventually all there is is... is, is is the doing there's no one doing it or there is is the doing and it's just happening on its own uh, sort of thing mm -hmm. is this something uh, a lot of people uh, i mean a lot of practitioners of that tradition do um no no i, I wouldn't say it's it's um, it's very common because obviously within within the religion of islam there's different sects as well mm -hmm. and it's, i guess it's also down to you know the way you are brought up the way you are taught um, some people do it some people don't mm -hmm. even though it's something that most uh, muslims know about and it is mm -hmm. recommended to do um so so yeah i mean yeah i guess i guess that's the effect that happens you know as you focus and you sincerely do it because obviously if you tell yourself you know this is a chore and and mm -hmm. and this is a tick box that i have to tick off you know as part of my daily routine then mm -hmm. then it's not really that won't work that won't work it, it won't work, work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so this single pointedness uh is something that is needed to uh to experience a breakthrough Mm -hmm. so so you call single pointedness is mm -hmm. when 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 that dissolution happens between mm -hmm. of the boundary sure. okay yes. so 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 this dissolution that you speak of is quite interesting because mm -hmm. i i experience this sometimes when 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 not through speaking mm -hmm. as the act also through walking right this is actually mm -hmm. how the whole um spiritual walks um initiated so for an example um I would take a walk through the park, right? And as I observe the act of walking, you know, eventually there's a realization where, you know, once this boundary dissolves, there's the realization that, okay, um, who is doing the walking? Really, you know, no one is doing the walking. It's happening on its own. And then how how is the act where there was the initiator of the eye doing the walking how is the act of walking really different to the clouds moving in the sky mm. or for example the 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 sun rising you know or the sun setting it's it these are all activities and motions within existence right it is just that for some reason there's an identification with this particular action of walking mm. right so it's not only through words, it's also through particular actions as well. Mm -hmm. 
at that point, it seems almost unnatural to uh, suppose just one concrete entity that is separate from all these other things, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it doesn't make sense, yeah. It doesn't make sense. Um, it makes it makes total sense of what is happening mm. but it doesn't make sense to say that this is happening because of right mm. it's just a happening mm. uh, so so yeah so so it's interesting i mean i love the fact that you know when you look at um different traditions and mm -hmm. practices there is there is this sort of underlying yes. uh, similarity yeah. You know, it's it's a point, a, a junction point where all the paths they cross eventually, mm -hmm. right? So, so it's quite beautiful to be able to see yeah. this, uh, especially in a dialogue like this. You know, um, sure. So, 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 please tell me then, Kento, we we discussed the sort of older versions of the mm -hmm. koans, right? How about the the newer versions? How do they yes. work? Um, so, one of the points I would mention is uh, that it would be nice if it can be um, referred uh, in a in a modern context. So, for example, um, uh, say um, okay. So let's take an example of that called moon. Okay, so that is certainly uh, done. That's a conversation in. Uh, old uh, Zen context of old China. So it's based on some terms like Buddha nature. And for some people, this almost something like technical term would be um, very unfamiliar to them. So the idea of modern uh, koan would be to um, just extract the, the essential part or point of it, and then uh, make renew it in a, in a modern outlook. So for that koan, I would say uh, if you are angry, you will uh, probably swear at someone. Okay. <laughs> so um, I would ask that uh, person to recall the memory of getting really mad at that person and then come up with one swear word <laughs> okay okay so so just to recap to see if i've understood so it's it's more of a um so it's relative so so you're saying the newer version of the current is more relative to the situation or a scenario mm -hmm. right yes. so so if you are angry um come up with a swear word mm. is that what you're saying yes and uh i will have him do the same as they did in the old days they did with the kong mu so they recite mu but instead uh, he can recite or say that swear word with his whole being and in that way he can know that anger or that swear word is not separate from himself and what is good yeah. about that is that he can relate it to his everyday life so it's not really about only about getting angry when he's sad he can cry mm -hmm. and he when he's really crying there's no division he is a crying he he's a tears you know so uh that is done it's it's you know in a way koans are are artificial and unnatural because they are do they are uh, making conscious of something that is done unconsciously and naturally in their ordinary life but mm -hmm. uh if if that's the case they won't be able to recognize that because it's too close you know mm -hmm. yeah in a, yeah. as one of the Zen sayings say that uh, not knowing is the most intimate. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. And that's one word. So it, it's the, the closest point you you can be is that you don't know about it. Okay. Mm. Because you are it. How can you know it? To know it yeah. 
there has to be division between you and that thing that is known. So uh, again, it's in koans, you artificially divide the two. And then again, you try to pull them together. Mm -hmm. And uh, just notice that it has been one from from the beginning. So that's yeah. Sorry, I I, I don't know if I'm asking. Uh, no, 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 no. It's through. nice. No, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I think it's it's good you mentioned that. And I also found it really interesting that you used um, anger as an example, right? Um, because usually when someone's angry people do everything in their power to try and stop being angry mm -hmm. right but here you're saying you know come up with the swear word say the swear word you know um and and it's it's interesting that you're not trying to push anger away because um when you were if you were to push anger away you're kind of somehow enforcing it really right this is this is really how the mind works you are you are adding something to it I believe, you know, last time we, we had a conversation like this, yeah. you know, when you, when you try to take something away or out of the mind or out of what you're conscious, you're actually adding something. <laughs> that you was know? quite an interesting finding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Mm. You know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's strange, you know, because conceptually you'd think, okay, I'm going to take something away, but, but, but it's the the very act of trying to take something away is an addition yes. to whatever is going on within the paradigm of yes, you're within adding, the adding the thoughts. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so essentially, you know, we are trying to fully embrace mm. what is happening. Mm. You know? I'm a bit doubtful about that uh, embracing or accepting uh, okay. because that is still duality, you know. There is there is you that is embracing it, and there is okay. something that is being embraced. So uh, that might be something of the wording, of course. But um, so you know, always when you use a word, uh, it's it's there. There's a limit. But uh, yeah. I would say um, knowing um, or being being it would be uh, mm -hmm. something some some words that i would use yeah. so right. if you are to understand really understand anger you you will have to be it mm. right. without right. trying to push it off nor uh or um trying to um accept it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, because when you try to accept something, there's the implication that that thing which you accept is separate from yes. you. Yes. Whereas when you say that you are being it, right? Or you are not, it's just being, right? There's, there's no separation in the matter. It just mm. is. Mm. That's, not, that's not pushing off nor accepting. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that's similar with that a koan I previously mentioned, mu. It's not about mm. yes, it's not about no. But it can be mm. yes or no. Uh, but this time it's a yes without a duality. So if you say yes, or yeah, if you just say yes, uh, that's not something about yes and no. That's the, uh, that's the yes. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Yeah. Mm. And if you say no, that's not the no of yes and no. That's no. Okay. Mm. Right. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, what, what would you say is um, an interesting obstacle that you know of? Or what would you say are the typical obstacles that individuals may find mm. in the journey? Mm of sort of self-realization mm. mm. these days uh, there are a lot of resources uh on the internet and uh also uh, we can read a lot of books uh you know just but we can buy it just by pressing a button on amazon so it's uh accessible it's it's a good thing that uh it's m more easily accessed but um um they can get confused by these uh flood this flood of information 
because uh, even if someone, so let's suppose that there's someone called A and there's someone called B, he tried to tell, uh, convey the same content, but the wording they use would be totally different. Mm. But still they are conveying the same thing, the truth about reality. When um, a practitioner who hasn't really uh, seen it, when they are exposed to these different expressions, there might be some confusion about it because they start to compare them and making their own interpretation of that expression. So that's uh, what I often see. So uh, yeah. one, one good example is um, people telling that you're awareness. <laughs> yeah. Probably you've heard it, about it again uh, a lot yeah. of times. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And when, I, for uh, my, uh, according to my understanding of that, is that uh, awareness is not something you know you 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 take as a subject of something or or something concrete or something in in, in the framework of division between awareness of some and something that is being aware um so people like Ramar maharshi uh you know he must have realized that it's, it's not something like that so uh, but but people uh, can get easily confused about it and think that okay I'm awareness so I'm this awareness and there are things that are being aware and you know so it's it's more like in that case it's more like this I the self is replaced by the concept of awareness so <laughs> um, it's 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 still it's still getting stuck in it. So in, in yeah. the concept of awareness. So that's that's something uh, all, always, all the time, practitioners have to be careful about. Yeah. In, in make uh, a realization by some people into a concept, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I see, I, I, I see this on so many degrees, what you mentioned here. You know, this is why I always mention, uh, and I have done so in my previous videos, you know, don't be entangled or fascinated by the words. You know, go straight to the source of the words, right? Exactly, yes. Um, very often, you know, because words are essentially a tool we use to communicate, right? And so there will be contradictions, there will be limitations of how something can be described, right? And obviously everyone sees things in a different way, and then you know it may they may be pointing towards the same thing, but because they see it differently, two different communication uh, or, or forms of communication can come out of it. Um, it's quite interesting you mentioned that because I see um, this sort of uh, obstacle take place in massive religions. You know, mm. um, essentially. It, the most of the abrahamic faiths um including islam you know praying five times a day is 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 a mandatory act and um it's part of the the sort of pillars of of the religion right mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so as they as people engage in prayer they they are taught from a young age that they are praying to god right mm -hmm. but god is also um described as that which you know is beyond imagination beyond the capacity of the human mind to uh, conceptualize but you are still telling yourself mm -hmm. as you get up that you are going to pray to god and so mm -hmm. there is some concept there is some image something like that right and so this conceptualization right is um you know an obstacle it entangles it's very similar to when you say that you know we are just awareness right mm -hmm. you know people are more entangled with the wording rather than than the act itself you know because the act itself if you were to sort of surrender mm -hmm. to that which is beyond your imagination to that which is 
beyond conceptualization, which is referred to as God, um, then then you would get a somewhat of a similar experience to what we said earlier, which you called the one pointedness, mm -hmm. where there is the dissolution of the identity, mm -hmm. you know, with the act, mm -hmm. you know, and so as you as you as you bow down, you prostrate, and you do these prayers, right? If they're done sincerely without any any form identification, mm -hmm. then you know one point of mistakes place the boundary between the person uh, or how how shall I say this? No one is really praying. Prayer just takes place on its own, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny if people uh, see this video and uh, they this part, for example, they hear that there is no boundary and there's just bowing they will imagine something out of it you know and maybe <laughs> yeah. another they, it, 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 there can be uh always a possibility for, for doing mm. that so it's difficult to uh do it convey it in words so that's why uh it's almost essential to uh have a, a live conversation first of all so that someone who has gone through the past, uh, who has already gone through, through uh, passed through the the barriers, barriers, and uh, you know, gone, gone, what has walked that that path, can see where where that person is really stuck, you know, and to see that uh, it's easier, far easier, to be facing face to face. Uh, rather than uh, reading something that person um, wrote, because right in writing, uh, the writing can sound sound very very uh, can you can all uh, almost sound like that sounds the same like all those people who are authentic. You can copy them, and uh, it's difficult to tell whether you're copying or whether you are. The, the, your words are coming from you, from your direct understanding of reality. So, uh, so that's uh, one um, uh, advantage of um, having these kind of conversations, even even yeah. in the framework of someone who has gone through it and someone who hasn't gone through it yet. Mm. Yeah. So always, yeah. yeah, it's it's always to have a, a friend guide. So to speak, mm -hmm. not in the framework of teacher or guru and uh, pupil or students, but friend guide. I, mm -hmm. I will call it. Mm -hmm. the yeah. relation, a healthy relationship uh, is that of a friend mm, that can be trusted. Uh, yeah, yeah. Trust uh, each other, and also uh, guide because to to for for the conversation. To be really successful, one has to be uh, has to know about the process, and for to so that the the one who is trying to go through the same process can know where to walk. Uh, otherwise, he get lost. It's like yeah, it's like uh, climbing a mountain without a map or climbing a mountain without a guide. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I I definitely agree with the with the you know having having. Uh, a, a friend to to sort of discuss or have this dialogue with um <clears throat> because and it and it's such a beautiful process as well every conversation i have is is so beautiful because there isn't um f first of all it's not a conversation where you're trying to convince someone anything no, not at all. right no and the second thing is is you know with that there is no agreement or disagreement you know, there just is, and it's just uh, pure exploration, pure exploration, and it's so beautiful because that <clears throat> that sort of um, egoic entity isn't trying to, you know, be something greater than what it is, or you know, trying to highlight itself. It's just a pure flow of exploration, and and usually every time a dialogue like this takes place you come out of it very refreshed in, in some way sure. you yes. know mm -hmm. and um and this is this is exactly um why 
one of the many reasons why I wanted to go about doing um, and starting, you know, dialogues like this with yourself, Kento, and, and creating a, a platform form like the spiritual walks mm. and i'm assuming you know this is also similar to why you've wanted to start your, exactly, your class, yes uh, yes similar quite it's all the same yes as i as i listen to what you're saying yes and i feel some kind of synchronicity because there's that you know you when did you start that uh youtube channel yeah so so I started it quite some time ago, but I didn't actually I come around to uploading mm. uh, up until the start of this year. So mm. from around mm. January time, I started uploading frequently on a regular basis. Mm. I see. Okay. So yeah, it's it's that. What's good about the internet is that we can, you know, put links uh, on it so that we we can introduce. Uh, for example, I can introduce you to the views of my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and they can broaden you know, their view uh, to see what works for them and what won't. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, my, my father used to always say that, mm -hmm. you know, because as a young kid, um, if I was, let's say, naughty, I was out of line, he would sometimes get his friends to speak to me. And I would notice this and I would ask him, why, why are you getting, um, you know, this uncle or your friend to speak to me? Mm. And he says that sometimes, you know, my words don't come through, but mm. their words will, you know. And it's just having that fresh perspective, a different, mm. you know, pair of eyes to, to, to you know, uh, uh, go through with this exploration, you know, mm. point towards uh, the same thing from a different angle, perhaps. And, and mm. there's always... Uh, a lot of use in that. Wow, that's great. Uh, you should be proud of your father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. What you did. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, just you know, being exposed to um, a lot of people and uh, having dialogues, mm, and yeah. you can find your own way to to go. You know, um, when when you climb a mountain, there are a lot of paths. Uh, you can yeah. go this way this way yeah this way and well they all lead to the top that's it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. so have so, mm -hmm. so yeah um i guess like i guess maybe yeah maybe it's a good time to wrap it up but mm -hmm. before uh, is there a good um uh, maybe a, a koan that you know may fall in line with the theme of this dialogue that mm -hmm. you know you'd like to share that oh, we can sure. yes. kind of think about um, okay okay so why one of the one of my uh, recent um, coins that I, I think it'd be effective is to ask where is it happening? Where is this happening? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> um, so the thing about this illusion is that people take it for granted that there's space and time. Mm. Okay, and it, it, as an actual uh, as an actuality, well, probably you you might know well uh, about it, but uh, there's there's nothing like that, space or time. That's a thought, thought construct, okay? Mm -hmm. But it feels like there, there's some space yeah. that is that things are happening in. So um, yeah. you can ask while you you're doing something, where is this happening? You should you you would say here, but what is here? You know? Yeah. Or you yeah. can ask when is this happening? Right? Yeah. Yeah. You will say now, but what is now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's you know for for those people who who you know uh, may be listening to this, who may <laughs> think, you know, what are you talking about? All of these years of science and physics, there's no space and time. <laughs> you know, it's it's um, just to maybe clarify things. It's it's not um, the work. Of science that this is sort of um, debunking or anything like that you know as a conceptual thing um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's essentially a human construct and a human form of communication science right of perhaps what is happening um, but we are saying that there is no here right um, there's no space and time in the in the way that it is only just a human construct to describe that there is space and time. 
you know aside from that you know what is there really right and and the way i see koans is that you are trying to ask some question that the um intellect sort of gets pinned down in yeah. some sense yeah. where yes it's like okay where do i go now right mm. you know where do i go and that naturally brings the intellect to a, a certain stillness and that stillness is where it's really at right exactly. and this to me isn't very different from you know taking a hike going out into nature and seeing a magnificent view of a mountain range because in the same way it's it's you are in awe because the intellect is quiet it doesn't know what to say it's quiet for that one moment well you have explained it in a most uh, elaborate way something that i wanted to explain so exactly that's exactly what i want to explain uh in terms of what quans are yes yeah very nice very nice i really like great. it yeah so well, uh, uh, yeah can great do. yeah it's always, so much kind it's of always a pleasure to talk to you talk with you have yeah. a dialogue so let's shall we do it again sometime 100% 100% yeah definitely <laughs> okay Kento, you have a good evening right now it's the evening or early morning it's morning in this <laughs> early morning what about you is it in there is it yeah oh. it's 8 8 p.m in the evening yeah great yeah. so have a great yeah. evening I'll all right you have a great yeah. day then yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely we'll do it again 100 percent. thank you so much for your yeah. time thank, thank you. you all right thanks bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.